It's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome to a new video, electrophoresis and immunofixation. In the previous video, we have talked about plasma cell dyscrasia or monoclonal gammopathies. Today, let's know what's the difference between electrophoresis, immunoelectrophoresis and immunofixation. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let me say thank you to my supporters at Patreon. You guys are the best. Thanks a lot. I truly appreciate it. Some of my patrons can get access to all of my notes that I'm writing right now. All of my hematology notes are available. Just one link. You can view them or download them. So you can go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. In the previous video, I've talked about plasma cell dyscrasia, B lymphocytes secreting plasma cells, secreting antibodies. When this process gets out of control, we end up with um, cancer. We have talked about hematopoiesis. Here are the B lymphocytes secreting plasma cells. An increase in number of plasma cells is called plasma cell dyscrasia. They are monoclonal gammopathies, such as multiple myeloma. Plasma cell dyscrasias, same thing as monoclonal gammopathies, same thing as paraproteinemias, same thing as dysproteinemias. Okay, you've talked about these gamma globulins, five heavy chain isotypes and two light chain isotypes. Normally, these light chains will be found in the urine, but should be less than 10 milligrams. More than 10 milligrams, this is usually pathology. We call them Benz Jones proteins. Not detected by dipstick, but indeed detected by electrophoresis. What does the word electrophoresis mean? Electro means electrical, phoresis means separation. Phoresis, separation. Not to be confused with apheresis, which means taking away, such as plasmapheresis and leukopheresis. Not to be confused, okay, pay attention. Electrophoresis separates the components of plasma proteins using an electric source. Plasma proteins are negatively charged, so they will escape from the negative electrode and they will go toward the positive electrode. Then we will plot the graph based on, let's say that they get stuck here, okay, most of them, so this will be like the albumin because there is a lot of stuff here. Some of them will be here, some of them will be here, and some of them will be here. This is the basic stuff or the basic mechanism. Okay, the direction of movement and the speed of movement depends on both the charge of the proteins and the mass of these proteins. What we have said was the normal. Now let's go to the pathology. Monoclonal gammopathies in the gamma globulin portion will be high. You will see a spike. We call it M spike, M component, M protein, etc. And the spike we cannot tell. Is this spike due to an increase in number of like IgM, IgA, IgE? We have no idea. So the electrophoresis cannot tell if this spike is due to like hyper IgG, IgM, IgA, kappa or lambda. We cannot tell. We only know that there is an increased number of gamma globulins in the plasma. Okay. So, the problem with electrophoresis is that we do not know the subtype of gamma globulin. Which one is high? We have no idea. So, how do we solve this problem? Forget electrophoresis. This is kind of old. Now, we have the immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation. We add antibodies to antigen. So, the antibodies such as anti-A, anti-G, anti-M, anti-kappa, anti-lambda, and when the anti-lambda detects the lambda, okay, and they will show kind of a band on immunoelectrophoresis, now we can tell that the high number of immunoglobulin are due to a lambda component in them. So which tests can detect monoclonal gammopathies? We'll discuss four tests. First, serum protein electrophoresis. It can quantify the M component, but it doesn't tell you which M protein is actually increased. So serum protein electrophoresis is quantitative, but not qualitative. How about urine protein electrophoresis? Same exact mechanism. 
except this is urine and this is serum. So it quantifies light chain in the urine, also known as Benz Jones proteins, but it doesn't tell you which M protein is increased or which Benz Jones protein is increased. Okay, so again, urine protein electrophoresis is quantitative, but not qualitative. We know that a gamma globulin is high, but we cannot tell which one. The third test is serum immunofixation electrophoresis, also known as serum immunoelectrophoresis. Now, it can specify the M component. We can know if it's high IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, and IgD. And we can tell the light chain, is it kappa or lambda? But it cannot quantitate the M component. Oh my goodness. Back to another problem. So the serum protein electrophoresis could tell us which could tell us that they are high, but it couldn't tell which one. Serum immunofixation electrophoresis, on the other hand, is the opposite. It can specify the subtype of the M component, but it cannot quantitate it. How about urine immunofixation electrophoresis? Same exact thing. Both of these tests are qualitative, but not quantitative. So here is the immunofixation, the qualitative test. So we have this kind of plot and we will have these bands. When we see bands, we read IgG and lambda. The interpretation is we have IgG lambda monoclonal protein in the serum of this patient. Now let's integrate both of them together. Let's say that you have a 70 year old male patient with bone pain, especially in the back and the ribs. His calcium level is off the chart. Creatine level is so high. So you ordered a serum protein electrophoresis and an immunofixation, also known as immunoelectrophoresis. On serum protein electrophoresis, you will find this M spike, which means the gamma globulins are high. This is called monoclonal gammopathy. Can we tell which one? Not yet. We need the immunofixation. On immunofixation, we see bands in IgG and in kappa light chain. So we have IgG kappa monoclonal protein. So this is the interpretation or the diagnosis. Can we diagnose multiple myeloma now? I think we are pretty confident, but the most accurate test to diagnose multiple myeloma is bone marrow biopsy, showing an increased number of plasma cells in the marrow. Don't forget the most accurate test to diagnose multiple myeloma is bone marrow biopsy or bone marrow aspirate. Don't forget multiple myeloma is a subtype of the broad category called monoclonal gammopathies. Monoclonal gammopathies include many diseases. One of them is multiple myeloma. Others are MGUS, Waldenstrom, macroglobulinemia, etc, etc, etc. Thank you for watching. I'm posting 101 cases or vignettes on Facebook until the end of this year, 2018. So make sure to go to Facebook. Just Google Facebook Medicosis and you'll see my page. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionals. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. In the next video, we will talk about multiple myeloma.